So the next thing we need is is X server. So we need to build the X server, which is the basic uh, framework to get a GUI up. So we need to go into that article. Okay, so there's the X server page. And just scroll down to the start. And as it says, installing Xorg server is much lighter than emerging an entire Xorg package and has all the necessary components of a fully functional GUI, such as Plasma. Um, when updating, just check the upgrade sub article. So the use flags, there's one use flag, which is capital X, so it's, that's important, X is a capital X. So let's stick that in to our global use. Stick that at the bit beginning because um, alphabetically, traditionally in the ASCII character set, our capital letters have come before lowercase letters. Um, so XORG drivers is a meta package to pull in the wanted drivers. Note that these drivers can be almost pulled in if the graphics card drivers info is set in make.conf and using a graphical profile it should a command emerge search XORG drivers to see if XORG drivers is already installed prior to merging. So I don't think it is but let's try that. Um, oops. So it's not installed and it tells us what version is available. Um, so we've got to set video cards and input devices which are two environment variables which can be set in make.conf so let's go to the first one which is um, video cards so let's click on that and for possible use values of this use expand variable, see video cards, the actual variable. Let's go into that link. And you can see there's all the different versions there. Um, so specifically for the Intel, which is what I've got, there is an i9165 for i9, sorry, i915 for i915 video cards, i965 for 965 video cards, and an Intel option as well. Um, if you've got NVIDIA, there's an NVIDIA option, various types of uh, Radeon cards here as well, older ones and newer ones. And there's some software based ones such as this software rasterizer and this lava pipe one for Vulcan software looks of it as well as other probably lesser known um, cards. So all I've got is an Intel built-in GPU. So as far as I can tell from this list, Intel is probably what I need. Let's go back and see what other information it's got. You can specify multiple values. Um, so there you can see there's Intel and NVIDIA together. So uh, for example, another machine I have got built-in Intel graphics, but the NVIDIA one isn't what I normally use but I've got the Intel as a backup in case there's some problem with the Nvidia card and also this one's got a Radeon and Visa driver as well so for an x86 it looks like don't need oh, without a discrete video card it says see Intel feature support um, any architecture with an Intel, Intel is required. And after setting or altering video cards, remember to update the system. So I think what we'll do, because like I said, I can't scroll back on this terminal, I'm going to run the update as we've got here to see what that does. 
with the X. So you can see that's bringing in some libraries mainly already. Um, and it's rebuilding a few such as Vim so that it's got support within the graphical environment. So while it's building, let's carry on reading the web page. Um, so we need to add in the video cards to this make.conf file. So let's plonk it in down here. And we just paste that in video cards equals quotes. And all I'm going to have here is Intel. And that should suffice. Then I'll rerun the update to see if that affects anything. And it says for more de details, see the AMD GPU, Intel, Nuvo or NVIDIA articles. Um, by the way, I should mention Nuvo is a open source version of the um, NVIDIA driver. Um, it's not as accelerated as much because obviously some of the stuff is closed source, but it is um, reasonably good. I've, I have used it. It's a pretty good driver, actually. Um, but don't expect the best performance out of it. So let's go to that Intel page and see what's on here. So straight away, this actually looks better on the web page because it's a table. And what it shows is the different generation of the graphics card. So this is the graphics card, not the chip. Um, and so, for example, Haswell is actually a Generation 4 chip. But you can see that as far as graphics, built-in graphics is concerned, it's Generation 7.5. <coughs> so this is a Rocket Lake chip. So it is a Gen 12, the looks of it. Well, it's actually Tiger Lake as well. I don't, I don't yet get the difference between Tiger Lake and Rocket Lake, but both referring to 11th Gen processors, apart from what I've seen so far, that Tiger Lake is uh, the mobile version. So perhaps that's stuff that's been carried over. But anyway, uh, it's generation 10, so it's the current generation effectively, even though it's several years old. And the last word in this line is what goes in um, the video card. So you can see Intel. In fact, most of these are now Intel. A lot of them used to be i965, but it's obviously changed with the new Intel drivers. Um, it's just the early ones now that retain the very early ones. In fact, the original built-in graphics cards aren't supported at all anymore um, but the second generation are supported with the i915 driver but anything from generation 4 um, so that looks like the um, netburst chips by the looks of it what I can see from that um, or some of them at least are supported with the Intel driver. So effectively, if it's relatively recent, within you know, perhaps the last 15, 20 years, then Intel is what you need for an Intel chip. So that all looks good. Um, so let's go on to the next page. Oh, there's a full list of Intel CPU graphics capabilities here. Let's have a quick look at that. Probably just out of interest. There's no real information there. I want the thought. Oh, it goes to the wiki page. Okay, so I won't bother with that then. Uh, let's go back. I can't stop this now. Right, so let's go back. Um, so firmware systems using Skylake, Broxton or newer Intel graphics will need additional firmware from Syskernel or Linux firmware package. So I'll need to install that. Otherwise, errors such as the following might appear in D message. So yeah, basically it's a firmware thing that is missing. So if I, oh, we've got a failure there. That's interesting. And I can't scroll back to see exactly what the failure is. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about that too much because it's probably incomplete the installation. Um, if I do D message, grep 
firmware. Yeah, you can see there's lots of firmware messages there. So, yeah, the first one is to do with the graphics driver. Um, it actually says 915 there, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. So I'm going to make a note of this file because that's going to be important to identify perhaps what we do need to install. So that's RKL underscore DMC underscore VER2 underscore 03.bin failed with error 2 RKL DMC version 203.bin so that looks like that will enable runtime power management. So the graphics card probably will work. It just won't work at its best. Um, it tells you where to get it from. Then there's some stuff about the firmware for the Wi-Fi adapter by the looks of it. So I'll make a note of that as well while I'm here. IWL Wi-Fi dash QUZ. Z dash A zero dash H R dash B zero dash seven one dot U code. And the regulatory DB is something that is always needed for the Wi Fi. So it's basically three bits of firmware that need to be installed, um, the two that are specific to the hardware I've got. So I've um, added in that video card's Intel, let's write that file now and try doing another update, and this might pull in some more now, um, looks like it hasn't at the moment. Let's see if this XCB installs. No, it's still failing. Okay, it goes past too quickly for me to see. Oh, let in one code, it can't encode character. Right, now I've had this problem before. What it is, the default um, locale is not UTF-8. And this package requires a UTF-8 um, environment. So it can be fixed. Um, and there's a more permanent fix to make rather than just changing the environment temporarily and um, installing the package and changing it back. Because obviously when it gets updated, it will need a, another... Um, switch over if you like. So what I do here is um, right uh, yeah what I do here is if we go into in fact we can change into here we don't need to be in this directory go into etc portage so this is the main configuration area for portage. If we create a directory called env, and what you can do here in the env directory is create individual environment files which specify how the environment should change. And you can specify um, you know, different things basically. So what I'm going to do is create one called utf8.conf. And in that, I'm going to assign, uh, insert LC all to equal en.gb, um, sorry, en underscore gb.utf8. So that makes all the locale variables set to my, uh, my region, but with utf8 as opposed to what I've got at the moment, which is ISO. 88591. So if I do locale minus um, is it locale in its own? Yeah, you can see everything set to ENGB ISO 88591. Um, with this file, um, UTF 8 it's called, isn't it? Yeah, 
Um, what I can do if I go back to the portage directory is create a file called package.env and in that I can specify packages that utilize that configuration file um, and basically the information there is executed purely for that package so just temporarily while that package is being um, built so to do that I put the category in so it's x11 libs forward slash lib xcb so that's the package that was failing and I just specify the configuration file that I want it to use when it's building that so utf8.conf and I'll save that I'll just verify the name of that file again yeah utf8.conf that matches so now whenever libxcb is built it will load the information or execute the information in that utf8.conf file which as you can see is to change the um, locale to be a utf8 locale build it and then return it to how it was so now if I rerun the build command it, it should work As you can see, it's building now. I didn't get this far before. So that's quite a useful thing to know. So let's go back, let that carry on build. Yeah, see, that's installed now, so that's fine. Let's go back, carry on reading this information about the firmware. So we need to load the syskernel firmware. Um, and we need to do some kernel changes as well to tell it which bit of firmware we want to install. So let's get that's still building. Let's get another terminal up while it's building. Um, so let's emerge that. Right, okay, so this needs a license to be accepted. So as before, what I'd normally do is to copy this. Edit Portage License uh, Package License, sorry, Package dot License, and this one's called Syskernel, so that'll go just below here. Keep everything alphabetical, it's easier to find things. And just take the number off so it's on version, so it'll always count for whatever version of Linux firmware is installed let's try that again now so there it is i think this is a bit of a download so it might oh no it's quite small i thought it was a big big one oh it is yes yeah, 366 megabytes so it's going to take a few minutes to download let's keep an eye on the build so that's going okay it's about halfway through Okay, so that's installed the firmware. Let's check to see if the updates have done. Yep, yeah, that's all successful. Okay, so let's get back to here. Um, so we need to go to the kernel next and configure this. Um, it does say including the firmware in the kernel may cause suspend to RAM to fail. 
If this is concerned, do not include the blob built into the kernel. Instead, add it to a firmer blob in the init RAMFS. And it gives an example there. So I, I suspect I probably won't be using suspend to RAM. So that's not a problem for me installing it into the kernel. Otherwise, um, if you're following along and that is a problem for you, then obviously you'll have to follow the alternative links. Um, okay, and it says alternatively compile the i915 driver as a kernel module and it will automatically load the firmware from the file system. Well, that's actually the preferred way of doing it, I think. So let's have a look at the kernel then, see what it's got. Uh, make menu config. Uh, let's have a look at the firmware library first of all. So ls minus lib firmware. So there's a lot of directories in there. And I want the Intel, I imagine. Yep. Intel U code, it might be even. I oh, know that's the processor market code. Um, so Intel, and it starts RKL. No, that's something else then. So what I'll do is I'll find this. So find lib firmware, grep RKL. So okay, so my one, it recommend, or it was looking for version two underscore o three dot bin. So that is the full path to the binary blob that needs to be loaded by the kernel. So make menu config. If we go back, we need to go to device drivers, general driver options, device drivers, general driver options. Then for the kernel since 4.18, we need to go into firmware loader that option there. And then firmware loading facility should be checked, which it is. And then build name firmware blobs into the kernel binary. And it looks like we don't put in the lib firmware part of the file name or the path, just the subdirectory and file name underneath that. So if I paste all that in, you can see from that example, it just starts with i915. So I need to delete everything from here back to there and press enter. And you can see there's the root directory specified, so it knows where to look already. And so it's compiled as a kernel module. Can't see that that can be done from there. Like I say, I'm not going to be using suspense around, I'm highly unlikely, so that won't be a problem. Graph GUC HUC firmware, the graphics microcontroller firmware flows function from the host driver. For Gen 11 plus GPUs, firmware loads by default since Linux 5.4. Okay, so it doesn't look like I need to do anything like that for that one. Uh, earlier generations, 9 9.5, it won't load by default. You need to put a parameter on the command line, as it says there. And it says, juicy firmware for the Gen 12 Plus now only uses major version numbers, e.g. TGL, GUC, 70.bin. And the HUC does not have a version number to identify the firmware file name. Other we're checking file kern log. Well, I didn't see that error. Um, it mentions firmware and I searched for the word firmware, so it didn't look like there's any requirement there. So maybe it's talking about the earlier kernel versions. Things it said it loads by default since Linux 5.4. So there's nothing to do there. 
Now we've got some more kernel options to check and set. So since kernel version 4.4, the driver has moved and legacy FB dev support is now config DRM FB dev emulation equals Y. FB dev emulation. Okay, so we need to stay in this kernel configuration. So the device drivers, then graphics, uh, support, then dev AGP GART should be set together with Intel 440LX. So it is, and so is the 440LX option. We don't need that set because we haven't got an AMD, so we'll get rid of that. Direct Rendering Manager is set. Um, that's fine. Then enable legacy FD, FB dev support for your mode setting driver. That's already set. Intel 8x, x9, 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 etc. HD graphics. So that's already set. Um, I wonder if this is the bit that should be set as a module. Yes, I think this might be the bit that should be set as a module. Um, so when it's saying about the firmware loading as a module, I think it's probably this option. So I'll set that as a module. Um, enable capturing GPU state following a hang. Actually, what I should do is just make sure it works first of all. So I will leave it built in. Enable capturing GPU state following a hang. Yeah, we've got that. Compressed GPU error state, we've got that. Always enable user point of support, got that. Enable Intel GVTG graphics virtualization host support. Doesn't look like we've got that. So that's under, well, just under the same level. So I can't see that. I'm going to get rid of that because I'm not sure I need that. Um, so now we go back to IO MMU hardware support. Is further down near the end here. There it is there. So that's set. And we want support for Intel IO MMU. There it is there. And enable Intel DMA remapping devices by default. That's set as well. Uh, not sure what that is. I'm not sure if I require that, so I'll get rid of that. I'll leave that. I think that might be useful. Um, kernel version 4.19 is later or later is recommended for Coffee Lake. Um, for DG2 successful loading of the HUC firmware requires Intel PXP support and the Intel Management Engine interface. So let's check these options then. So let's go back. Device drivers, graphics support again. Enable Intel PXP support. Didn't see that there. Graphic support.
So it's directly under, I can't see that. Let's look for PXP. All oh, right, it's within the Intel option. So I need to go back here. Uh, search for that again. It's within graphics for Intel 8xx graphics. All oh, right, so the Intel MEI PXP needs to be set, but it looks like it to expose this option. So you can see it's not set at the moment. And that's presumably this option here. So I'll need to go into miscellaneous devices first. So let's exit that. Look for where's this under device drivers. So miscellaneous, there it is there, miscellaneous devices. And we'll look for Intel Management Engine Interface. I think that should already be set. Yeah, it is. ME enabled chipsets, that's set. Intel MEI GSC embedded device, that's that one. And Intel PXP services of the ME interface, that's that one there. So if I now exit and go back to the graphics driver. There it is there, so now I can set Intel uh, PXP support. So that's all set, so I'll save that. Let's carry on reading. X drivers, so it's telling us about setting video cards. So for Gen 1, uh, sorry, 2 and 3, as it says there at the bottom, we need to set Intel and i915, but for Gen 4 and higher, we only need Intel, so that's what I've already set. Um, after editing make.conf, update the systems as changes take effect by passing the change use and deep options to merge. Well, I think that's the options we've been using, just the short forms of them. Um, let's go into. Yep, change use and deep. Um, those wishing to not accept the, def the Intel graphic driver defaults in the main repository can read on to the subsections below. Intel DDX, before proceeding with the Intel DDX driver, note this driver has been slowly deprecating for several years. So we probably don't want that one then. So the mode setting DDX, as mentioned above, the mode setting DDX driver is now the default driver in newer Intel chips, graphics chipsets for Gen 2. This driver uses Glamour to accelerate 2D graphical over MESA, the open source OpenGL implementation. As of X11 base, XL drivers 1.19, this has become the default for Gen 2. And as of XL server 1.20.6, Glamour support is enabled unless the minimal use flag is enabled. No additional steps or configuration are necessary. If it's necessary, so there's some information every time that it's necessary to load the mode setting, def uh, mode setting driver. And if there's screen tearing. And some more settings there for um, kernel, early kernel mode setting. VA API supports acceleration with the LibVA Intel driver and newer graphics cards since Broadwell which is generation 8 graphics card are better supported with the LibVA Intel media driver so I'll install that and I think there's also a flag for VA API as well so let's have a quick look at that VA API, yeah, there it is. Enable video acceleration API for hardware decoding. So, what I'll do is I'll add that into the use flags. Uh, VA API. And, oh, I didn't need to come out of there, did I? And 
and I'll update again. Now I've done that change. There's nothing to do at the moment. So what I'm going to do then is to find my right page is install this driver. And that again needs a, a license agreement. So let's copy this. Edit package.license and this is for media libs. So no source code for media driver. Let's try that again. So you can see that's pulling in a few other packages. Okay, well that was rather a strange package. I was slightly concerned during the middle of that that it was just going around in a circle. All I could see was well, as you saw, it was just streams of letters going up the screen. Normally you can see commands being compiled and so on. And it just used to be it just seemed to be a continual stream of text that couldn't read because it's going by too fast. Um, but obviously it was compiling. I have compiled this before this package, but normally it's within a graphical environment remotely, um, never on a, a console. So maybe that's why it looked a bit strange and then capital capital at the end it just pulls there with no changes whatsoever um, I imagine it was just linking and tidying up so a bit of a, an odd odd package to say the least um, so that's all okay um, that's installed let's see what else we've got here um, Vulcan support in the main eBuild repository for Intel core processors using the MESA driver it will Build a working Vulkan driver it will not provide a lib Vulkan SO1 but a driver specific Vulkan Intel SO the package lib Vulkan loader provides lib Vulkan SO1. If lib Vulkan Intel SO is missing, then you need to compile media libs MESA with the Vulkan use flag. Okay, so I won't concern myself too much at the moment with that. Um, but yeah, if it's of a concern, I can uh, uh, check that out later. Um, there's this IGT GPU tools for providing debugging, which gives you some information about the uh, Intel graphics card. So it can be quite a useful tool to have. So let's install that. Um, Okay, so it looks like it's a masked package, um, which means that we have to deliberately accept it. Um, it's basically not particularly stable, but it should be okay to um, install. So if we copy this and then edit portage package dot accepted use I think it is let me just check that on another machine accept keywords sorry accept underscore keywords accept keywords yeah so it's a new file if we just paste that in here <clears throat> and again just rub out the version number it just means that uh, we accept that it might not be um, stable, but you know we want it added. So now you can see that it's allowing us to add it, and it also indicates to us there that it's an effectively an unstable package. So let's start that one off. Okay, that's done. So, as you can see there, we can look at the current frequency of the card. 
So let's put that in. And it's got some, okay. Some, okay, maybe because the firmware is not, no, not loaded, we need to build a kernel as well. Um, maybe now would be a good time to do that. Um, so trying to think, I'll have to load up all the browsers again. Um, yeah, actually, I think I'll carry on building things I've got this all set up rather than having to set it all up again. Uh, I'm not sure if it's Intel GPU top. Yeah, that works all right. So you can see it's showing you how busy the processor is. Um, not sure if we can get it to do something. So it's yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to see anything going. But basically, if it was doing something, then you could obviously monitor it here. here. Um, it gives you some information there. Video busy on 0% means that hardware decoding and coding is not used. Uh, there's something there about fast boot. Um, so it's not enabled on anything earlier than a Skylake. So there's possibly a thing about permissions there, but we've got kind of text in a video group. Let's just check that. Uh, is that cute to quit that? Yep. So yeah, there's the video group there. So that's fine. So choose one of the following, so DDI, DDX, sorry, we're not using that. So this is just configuration for xorg.conf. And it's just other troubleshooting parts here. So I think that's probably it for the Intel configuration. Um, so I think that's the end of the video cards bit in total actually. So the next thing we need to go to is the input devices. Um, oh, that was a separate link there. Let's have a look at that. I think we're on that one. Oh, yeah, it's just a list. Okay. Uh, yeah, this shows various bits of hardware and the settings that are here. Um, so generally either I found either RevDev or um, LibInput I'm on the right page here. It's video cards, isn't it? Oh, that's not going to the right. Oh, yeah, see make.com for a list of possible values. So that's make.com in general. Let's go for the possible values. Yeah, this list here. Um, so you can see EvDev on the bottom line there. For FDEV input, I think the generally accepted driver for keyboard and mouse input is the lib input, which is that one there. Um, unless you know you need something else, that's probably um, sufficient. So let's go into there. Oh, it's just taking us back to here, is it? The looks of it. Yep, 
looks like it is. Okay, so what I shall do is just check another machine. I'm pretty sure you just set it to lib input. Uh, yeah, in fact, the machine I've just looked at has got FDEV and lib input, but I'm sure only one or the other is needed. Um, so I'll edit. Uh, now we've got make.conf and we up there. So all I'll do is just add in the, is that going back, uh, back again, yeah, input devices. Equal, and I will put in FDEV just in case there's any problems. But like I said, I'm pretty sure lib input is uh, preferred and probably uh, just sufficient enough on its own. So I'll save that and have a go at rebuilding. See if that pulls anything in. Oh, that's interesting. So liberation fonts is now can now see that the X variable has been set. I don't know why that hasn't been pulled in before. Maybe there's something else we've installed that's caused that to exist. Okay, that's done. So yeah, the liberation font's been added here. We can see that. So we can do a select fonts config list and it's number 60 or group 60. You can see it's not set. It's a good font to have actually. So I'm going to set that or enable it rather. Enable and it's number 34. So just relist that, make sure it's set. It is, so that's good. Um, so now I'm going to go back to the browser. We've added X to the use flag. We've set the video and input devices. Um, it's recommended to issue for both option when emerging XOR so because the XOR drivers on Mesa may be pulled into dependencies if they're not already installed, which they will be. Um, if XOR drivers end on the music packages are emerged directly, i.e. without the one shot, they'll be recorded in the world file and could therefore cause future package upgrade conflicts when portage is upgrading dependencies. So now install the XOR base server and there's some information there about the use flags for XOR server and here's the command to do it. So let's go and install that. I'll time this. Be interesting to see how long it takes and we'll look at it verbosely. And as I thought it was gone off the screen, so let's see if we can just put less on that to see the top of that list. So we've got LLVM coming in. That's going to take a little while to build. There's a few X libraries. There's lib input, so it's found that to build. Uh, yeah, there's LLVM there, and some more LLVM. So here's Misa. This is the end of the um, message. So I'm just going to bolt out of that, rerun it without the less. So we can see it in colours, make it a bit easier to read. So yeah, we've got Misa coming in now, and there's a few settings here that you might want to set um, possibly but for the moment I'll leave them unset so there's that Vulcan one you can see video cards it's pulled in Intel 
You can also see FDAV and Live Input have been recognised as well, so that's good. Elogind has been set for Xorg server, so that uses that, and it uses UDAV. Um, and yeah, that's the drivers. And that's causing the FDAV and Lib Input drivers to be pulled in for Xorg as well. As I say, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure only one of these is required. Um, but as the machine I'm looking at has got both, I'll, I'll leave that in for the moment. Just to be sure I know that machine I'm looking at is, is working. Um, I don't think there's much else to look at apart from wait for this to build. As I say, it'll probably take... Um, a little while. Um, not sure how long it'll take on this machine. With 16 cores, it shouldn't be too long. Um, but yeah, let's get it going and wait for it to complete. Okay, that's finished compiling. There's, again, there's some messages I've scrolled off, unfortunately. Um, since we've disabled the scroll back in the terminal, I'm not sure if you can turn it on in the kernel. I'll have to check that up sometime. I don't really use the console that much as I tend to do everything remotely so I can use a, a graphical environment but there's some suggestions there about how to set up an X session for StartX um, which we may have to do to test this and some extra packages for LLVM and then we've got a news item so let's Look at that. Oh, so it's just about X also uh, dropping SUID default. So I'll just read that. It's not particularly important. It's something that's happened in the past. Um, basically, for people who um, would notice the change. So that's installed permissions. We've checked within the video group. Usually, X server is started by starting a display manager automatically on boot. So let's have a look at that. Um, we might be able to get this working with StarTex, but being there's some things we haven't done, it might not work. Um, I think I'm tempted to try it. Let's use this one here. Um, I'll log out and log back in again. In fact, it might not work because we haven't built the kernel. Come to think of it, that's a good reason why it might not work. Uh, let's just do StarTex on its own. And no, it hasn't worked. TWM. Oh, yes, okay. So we need to install a few extra packages. So let's do emerge TWM for the tabbed window manager. Um, X term, X clock are needed. They all get loaded. Uh, another handy one to have is X eyes, which will just display a silly pair of eyes that follows the cursor. Just a curiosity more than anything else. Um, actually, I just noticed with uh, X term, there's a useful setting called toolbar which displays a toolbar in every window which can allow um, access to a menu function so it's really useful to have and also true type some decent looking fonts so what i need to do is set that up in package.u so this will be the first time we start specifying some parameters in there um, i think true types a global variable toolbar almost certainly isn't so let's have a look at true type and toolbar. So no, there's no tool toolbar there, but true type is there. So I'm going to modify the use flags to add in true type. For true type fonts, anything that uses true type fonts will be able to use them by adding that in. And then here I'll add in to 
X terms, X term, the toolbar option. So BI ETC portage package dot use. And you can see this is the first time I've used this. So this is where you spe specify uh, individual flags for or, pa or flags for individual packages. So I'll just put toolbar in there. Save that. And first I need to do an update. So there it is. I've made changes to make.conf and package.use. So you can see libx font uses it. We've already installed. Pillow uses it. It's already installed. And so does grub. And xterm hasn't appeared there because it's not installed at the moment. But obviously when we come to install it, it true type will be highlighted in green, showing that it's found that it's it's been activated and it's got to compile that functionality in. Okay, so that's those updates done. So now let's re-emerge those packages or re resume emerging them. And they're all pretty tiny, so this shouldn't take more than a minute or so to complete. Okay, so that's finished. Let's now try to run this again. Okay, yeah, it has worked. So despite everything that hasn't been compiled in, um, it is all working. Let's do the top. Yeah, that's working fine. So basically what it means is we can carry on uh, building in the graphical environment. The only thing is I've got to build a graphical browser. Um, and yeah, once I've done that, then can carry on. It'll be a lot easier to install stuff uh, because I've copy and paste a lot easier and just browse a lot easier. So the last thing I'm going to do is to compile the new kernel. So let's change this to reverse video just so it's a bit easier to read and make the font a bit bigger as well. Uh, get rid of that one. Um, fonts. Right now I've made this too big. Right, so um, let's CVSU minus change into user source Linux and make minus J16 to rebuild the kernel. So usually modifying just one or two drivers here and there would um, just rebuild that section, but we've modified quite a lot, and quite a lot of it was to do with the core, so it's going to be quite a lot to rebuild. Okay, so that's built. Let's install the new kernel and the modules. Modules install, sorry. Modules install and emerge module. Okay, the keyboard's not set up correctly here. Module rebuild in case there's any um, packages built against kernel, there isn't. So finally, grub make config just to rebuild the config. Uh, minus O stroke boot stroke grub grub dot cfg and as I've rebuilt grub I should reinstall the 
uh, bootloader for Grub as well. So that should be it. If I quit this, come out of this, so I've got to remember that the next thing I've got to do in the next session is to carry on arguably with STDM, which is the um, display manager, which is this page here. So it's the display manager in the Gen 2 wiki that I'll have to follow the links to. But for now, I'll quit this, come out and I'll reboot. Okay, so let's get this booting. Okay, so let's just run StarTech, see what happens. Yep, it's come up straight away, so that's fine. And it all looks okay. So what we'll do in the next session is to um, install the a web browser and then complete the KDE installation by installing the display manager so we can log in with a graphical display and then install the rest of KDE and Plasma. And then we'll go on to install some other stuff like LibreOffice and so on. So for now, I'll just log out of this and shut down uh, In fact, I should have done just sudo shut down, minus H now.